Welcome to the first live shift cast. And we've got a special guest today. Beastbound is with us. Let's just start at the top here and go around. Michael, how are we feeling? First live cast. Man, listen, it feels like, you know, when I first came out with Shift RLE in 1996 <laughs> as the premier spot for Rocket League News and Intel, yep. you can only dream of having a live Shift cast. That was kind of the final, the final goal was having a live podcast featuring one of Mina's premier coaches. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I shed a tear before I got here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just the moment I've been waiting for 30 years for. 30 years. All right. Jens, any thoughts on the so. first live cast? I mean, uh, the circumstances are perfect. I yeah. was ill the entirety of last week, down with the cold. Yesterday, went to Rock Werchter, one of the biggest rock festivals in all of Europe, I would say. Uh, completely disregarded Foo Fighters to go see Jungle and Parcels, but it was great fun. My voice, though, I hope it holds up. I just, I can only pray at this point. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Probably better, probably better if you just... just and you know. Eastbound, our guest for today. We're going to have plenty of time to talk to him about some coaching and stuff. But uh, how are you feeling this afternoon? Um, I'm feeling great. I mean, they told me to stay up until midnight local time. I'll gladly for shift the first edition. It's, it's a pleasure being here, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much for staying up this late. Yeah, uh, yeah, now I have at least someone with me who feels my struggle. Because these so, yeah, guys said, over there at I 6 p.m. I said afternoon. You I gotta, guys I gotta eat there. a late dinner when we do this. I don't know. That yeah. sounds a lot worse than It I is already the late. next day for us, yep. Yeah. It's Tuesday, which means it's the first day of the Shift Summer League, at least right. the Open Qualifiers. We have some good Summer teams League. in that, too. Good teams. Well, we got, uh, we got, I mean, a lot to talk about. Like they said, Shift Summer League coming up. We got Qual's beginning Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Europe will be happening at 7 Central European time. Uh, NA will be happening at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So y'all be sure to uh, stay tuned on that. There's no main broadcast for Open Qual and no main broadcast tomorrow for play-in. Uh, but next week is when things will, will get kicking. So um, let's just jump right into it. Beast Mound. How was this season for you? Give us a uh, give us some insight, a little bit of a recap for R8 and their RLCS season. Also, for people who might not know who you are, I, I can't imagine anyone oh, not knowing who you, you are. Can. Of course you can. That's not no, no. I mean, I appreciate all the compliments. No, uh, uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Beastband. I am a Dutch coach. I'm relatively new, but I've had. Uh, a fair amount of success, if I dare say so myself, in the Middle Eastern region. Uh, my first team uh, was with Basel and the Twins. I was in Calais. That was back at the original Game is 8, so that is now two years ago. And ever since then, I've had various teams uh, in and out of the Middle East. Um, it's one of the regions that I absolutely love coaching, but I've also definitely had my fair share of uh, struggles with. Um, so I guess that's the short summary of me. But um, I mean, this season, R8, uh, I only like got into the team halfway through the season. Um, uh, I, uh, I was approached by Basel again. Uh, I coached him like two years ago, and he was like, listen, Beast, we, we need some help. We're struggling with, you know, the, the big teams that have formed at the, the top of me now. We want to compete. And I was interested, obviously. Uh, I've always liked competing for a top spot, and my team in Europe was uh, not looking to too hot uh, they were all looking to go their separate ways so uh, i was eager to, to to try my luck again in, in the middle east and i really only like did the second major with them and then two of the saudi league uh, if you follow me now you'll know that that is a very very frequent event very very fun to watch completely like the top of the middle east again competing against each other like a separate league it's really really fun to watch and it's quite a big deal within the region right with yes. the lands oh, yeah, and no, everything no. yeah i mean uh, the top six it used to be top six uh or it used to be top eight top six nowadays just are there on location in riyadh i was lucky enough to attend twice this year so yeah i've had a i've had a, I've had a great time this year um kind of like flew in like march and immediately, like three weeks after, I was already in Riyadh for the first event. Um, and then Major 2, and then now the, the second event. Uh, and sadly, my, my contract has ended with them. 
I am relatively expensive for a guy that doesn't really speak Arabic. I'll be honest. I've been working on it, but it's it's the main concern for me still. <laughs> it's it's not the easiest language, I'll be honest. But no, I mean the team. I love the team. I love the the, the region. It's been very welcoming to to kind of be there and be able to compete. Uh, I got I got a couple of questions then based on those things that you just mentioned there. Um, first up. Talk to us a little bit about that language barrier. And then so you have the second one in your mind. I want to ask you, uh, what is that land like in Riyadh that's happened a little bit more frequently with Saudi E-League relative uh, or compared to RLCS? But we can we can start with the language barrier stuff. How does that work? How do you navigate that? The language barrier, it, it mainly limits me. Um, the, the communication for the team all happens in Arabic. Um, I have a setup that allows me to kind of let at least if someone is talking by themselves, uh, let it be translated uh, using just Google Translate, which doesn't always work in 100% well, uh, but at least I can follow their conversations. Uh, but ultimately it comes down to me speaking English to them and them speaking Arabic between themselves. Uh, most of the people I coach, they have at least a fair understanding. Uh, they're all very, most of the people I've coached are very timid. They, they, they don't really want to try with English. They all feel like they don't really like know the language as well. But I found that most people do know a surprising amount of, of yeah. English uh, um, because there is a lot of content also in Saudi Arabia. Like even most stores, most um, shows, they all feature English as well. So they all know a fair amount of English, but they, they're very uncomfortable talking. Um, yeah. And that, that definitely is the main concern. And that limits me as a, as a coach, as an Arabic speaking coach in the region. 100%. Is that so I'm, I'm guessing when you're not like in a time crunch, like a, a scrim or something, it's probably not terrible. But I imagine like when you get into live events or like a timeout or something, that's probably really, it's probably really challenging. Yeah, it's it's really it's mainly also distracting. Uh, so you have to like you already have to kind of limit how much you do. Obviously, if they're focused on Rocket League and I go and speak a language they don't feel very comfortable in, it's it takes them out of their focus. So you have to limit yourself to the absolute necessities. Uh, you can't go and give them like a, a speech. You can't be the motivator you want to be. Uh, it also just limits you in, in how much you actually can get to know about them. Uh, I like to get like personal with the players. I like to know how they progress themselves. I like to know how they do certain things. And that's just something they, they aren't always able to, to, to navigate around. So it does limit me in a way, but uh, yeah, again, I'm, I'm hundred percent like thankful for the opportunities I've been given and nothing but love for the, for yeah, the, the region. So yeah. yeah, of course. And now um, that follow up about the lands, do you notice any difference between like an RLCS land versus the Saudi E-League land? I've, so I've sadly never got to work a major myself. Oh, okay. um, the only events I've, I've worked are <laughs> Gamers 8 and uh, Saudi League. So gotcha, only okay. LAN events I've worked are, well, Gamers 8 was in Riyadh as well. So are all in Riyadh. Um, I mean, there is definitely a, a big difference. The, the crowds there are less uh, in person. So there's not as much of a... A uh, hyping crowd that's yelling. There's there's usually a couple of people there, but it will it will be limited to a certain amount until it's the the, the major kind of events. Um, quality wise, for me, it, I'm more worried about work. Um, what I've seen, I've attended RLCS events, but I've never got to work one. From what I've seen, uh, there is a lot more kind of privacy, whereas in in Saudi, for example, uh, they have this this very cool venue. I, I really enjoy it. Um, you, you drive there, you get to the, the place. There's just a, a big stage. Everything's well set up. There's a small uh, stands where people can watch. There's just a caster's booth. And then there's just six rooms. That's just the stairs away, realistically. So it's not like you have your own private rooms behind the scenes. You can walk off and have like a, a private moment. You just sit next to each other. There's a cubicle here, there's a cubicle here, a cubicle there. And that's, that's kind of it. Yeah. Um, but it's very hard to compare because I've never yet, sure. hopefully, got to work yeah. a major. But uh, yeah. I, I, I have yeah. dreams. I'm, I'm in there for the long run. Uh, I mean, we I talked little, about it a little bit on the last episode of Shift Gas, where in Rocket League, we haven't really had, like you see in some bigger esports like League of Legends or CSGO, where players are like real divas and cannot get in the crowd or they'll just get swarmed. I mean, it happened a little bit in London. Uh, but it does happen, and that's already it shows that in Rocket League, it's the, the players are very close to the audience, and not just literally, but also they, they're just they're just interacting a lot, and you don't really see that. So 
maybe it's not that different from RSS than you think having those rooms set up. Like definitely, there 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 is like obviously still like differences, but I don't think I think that has more to do with just the age of Rocket League. I mean, Rocket League turned nine yesterday. That's young. That's young. It's a completely new genre. Uh, like CS:GO is was it fifteen hundred and forty years old now? I believe. Uh, yeah. It was it was around when I started Shift in eighty seven. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> I remember very well. That was <laughs> yeah. my primary inspiration, really. Uh, this is big, big. I respect it. But yeah, no, I mean, yeah, Rocket League. Uh, if you look at, uh, I saw a video the other day of uh, Faker. The I mean, everyone knows Faker. Who am I kidding? Uh, he was just walking on a, on an airport, and there was just like twenty security guards around him because otherwise he doesn't get places. He needs That's that I mean, army. Yeah. Like people crowd him and uh, like a meet and greet in rocket league means that the team just walks there maybe like maybe they'll have the manager be like oh sorry can we pass real quick but everyone's like yeah of course you can uh they'll Completely be like a few, but like that's it nah, we got places to go rocket league still got places to go i mean i mean it's still already it's already changed i mean in season two in amsterdam with like two uh, two thousand people in the audience the uh players were just go- using the same bathrooms as everyone else as well so i just needed to go and I stepped into this bathroom and that was just Jacob from NRG. You didn't tell Jacob to look just the door there. after himself, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it, was nah, just, I got you, I got you. it wasn't in any stalls or anything. I just walked oh, into the... It's just, it's just one, one port to port. It was just there. No, no, yeah, that means you know. we, we, we've been going places. I mean, yeah, I, I mean slow, uh, slowly. I'm one of the most Maybe popular steps. people about Rocket League and I'll be very honest about it. I don't think, it, it, yeah, it's, it's going nowhere. We, we've got places to go, 100%. Um, I actually wanted to ask, kind of go away from Mina real quick, because I want to talk a little bit about another uh, coaching job that you had, uh, which was coaching Endpoint UV. Um, yeah. You know, women's Rocket League is something that has gained quite a bit of steam, I would say, over the last two years. You know, them getting LAN, um, and I know there's been some issues in terms of, like, getting everything organized with some of the orgs that were running it, but um, <laughs> I guess my question was, is, um, you know, what was... Was there a difference in coaching a women's team versus coaching an RLCS team? And if so, like, how did you have to change it? Because I know in traditional sports, sometimes coaches say they have to change their thing, but in gaming, it, there's not that much of a difference. So I, I was I was hoping you could provide some insight on how that was and, and what you felt in that time. For me, this is a little bit different. I feel like if you ask most coaches, I think they will have changed things. I, I as a coach, I've coached 12 years. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I've coached longer than Rocket League existed. I used to coach track and field. So I knew what coaching was before Rocket League was a thing. I take people, I learn from the people, I help them progress. Um, and I think one of the, the bigger things that, that like I personally can give Rocket League, or like I know good coaches can give Rocket League is, Coaching still has a long way to go in Rocket League. Good coaches make an impact. There is good coaches about, don't get me wrong. There's also a lot of just friends or people just, you know, I call them cheerleaders. And there's nothing wrong with that. They absolutely will still have a a positive effect, but um, that's different. So the difference for me between like an RLCS level team, teams competing for like major spots um, and, 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 and female Rocket League doesn't necessarily vary so much in uh the way i approach the team more so in what you get back so even if uh, if i were to coach someone who's just a diamond as long as they are ambitious enough and willing to work i coach them the same amount as i would someone that's an rlcs because you put the same amount of hours and you make the same kind of progress as long as you're willing to put those hours in um so i don't think that's too much uh, the main issue with them i'll be very honest i really enjoyed my time with endpoint and with the team uh, i'm still on very good terms with with, with the people and uh, i'm very happy to see them still competing the main issue they had, there was just no tournaments. So there was no no ways to measure themselves. Radiant was the one thing. There was like talks of a tournament being created. But at some point, there was like three months and there was just no motivation. Uh, and that was that was for them just the main, like coaching a team with no ambition or no, no measuring point kind of up ahead, that's very different. And that's the main, main difference between the, those two. Um, when you were kind of in that lull period, where you didn't know if there's going to be anything to compete in. Did you attempt anything to try to keep motivation going or, or what? I mean, I'm sure you would like, you know, were like, you know, let's keep on track, let's keep practicing. We never know what's going to happen. But were there anything like special ideas that you might have had that you were sitting in bed one day and thought, okay, I'm going to do this. And then at, like, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. Do you have any sort of special ideas during that time that maybe made you a better coach? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, hundred uh, percent. I have IDs, um, and and they work for myself. But it's very hard to give someone motivation uh, if hmm. uh, you know if if people don't believe in your scene long enough. If you get doubted every game you get into, and especially like uh, one of the players at the time was having a, a hard time where people were just giving her a lot of like trash whenever she'd queue up. So she was just having a, a very bad time in Rocket League altogether. It's very hard to motivate someone who's no measuring measuring points and no positive like experiences in the game whatsoever so like oh yeah my coach is telling me to just focus on myself and do this but like ultimately i don't feel like playing the game uh it, yeah it's very hard to just like create that and yeah um i think i'm i'm pretty capable at like giving people individual goals uh listen hey i know you like this let's see if we can get you to, to focus on this for a bit right let's take a step back from the the freeze and the team stuff i know you really like your mechanics so let's see if we can find a way for you to to master this mechanic or you know uh, make it a consistent quadruple flip musty pancake off the backboard ceiling stall shuffle pancake again project musty. daniel yeah, I don't know. Uh, you got you can you can keep coming up with goals as long as, long as you're creative enough. It will be fun, but ultimately it's their motivation and their ambition that carries them through. Typical Dutch trying to promote the pancake agenda. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Slow up, <laughs> Um, Still and then bad. quickly, <laughs> um, I guess I want to go back to something you said, which is that you felt like you've been coaching basically the entire time that Rocket League existed before Rocket League existed. You feel like it has a lot way to go. I thought one of the coolest points of the London Major was during the G2 Furia final uh, semi-final and i know they've done this in previous lands maybe the last one but they brought in sad jr to almost like tell the crowd like hey what would you give your um what would you give your players in this at the spot being down 2-0 to g2 and he he was really technical with it he was like we need to follow our touches up better and we need to make sure that we're not letting them get space and to me that represented a little bit of a change in terms of coaching where it actually gave uh people watching an insight to what a coach would actually say instead of just being like that coach is good because his team's winning this team is good bad this team this coach is bad because this team's losing um so for you how have you seen the coaching around you and you're speaking to other coaches kind of change and do you think we're getting close to a point where coaching is a lot more tactical and less mental or do you think the mental side is still kind of dominating coaching in rocket league it, it will be a combination it's it's it very first of all it depends on what players you coach if you have a player that's very able to do the analysis themselves that knows how to set their own goals and really is just struggling to, to get in that routine or to get on the game. And then you need a coach that's there for the mental, someone that makes it fun for them to be there. And that, that will be enough. If you have a coach that's really analytical and can give you exactly where you need to go and what to focus on, but you have a player that's that's already got the, the peak mental, you've got a match made in heaven as well. Right. I think overall, I just like it. I'm not specifically targeting coaches. I'm not specifically talking about what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm, more thinking that the analysis which is often presented as coaching is not necessarily the full coaching product and uh, right if you ask the average diamond player right now like oh hey what do you think a coach does he's like oh yeah he points me at my mistakes and i'm like that's less than a tenth of what you do as a coach right like you you know sure pointing at mistakes is cool but everyone can see oh you missed your flip you made a mistake haha ha, that's not that's not coaching that's you know, where do you give them the motivation? How can you give them the tools to actually make the improvements thereafter? Can you see the process? Can you see their individual points? There's so much more going on that for me as a coach, like I run into all the time, honestly, I mean, uh, I don't mean to, to promote, but like whenever I, I stream, for example, I get a lot of people that just come into my chat and they're like, oh, you're a, you're a GC player. How do you coach professional players? You're not as good as them. And I'm like, so listen, I'm, I'm more than happy to and like explain every single time what a coach does, but it's not like I go to a professional player, right? It's not like I, I coach them. It's like, listen, I do this and it's working for me. You should try it. Because that <laughs> doesn't work. It's not, it's not that. Like, so I think just the general idea of what a coach does is something that's just undervalued for a lot of like areas. And that's yeah, an interesting one for me. Where do you stream again? Beastbound? <sighs> Oh, I don't know. Where, where is that? What, what's, what's the link that we can... Where can we find you? Yeah, I, I, I stream where, on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash beastbound. Oh, thanks. Oh, there we go. There we go. There, there's someone, <laughs> something I want to ask you. No as well, Because I hate yeah. when casters use the phrase, when there's a timeout called in the middle of a series, this is where the coach, you know, earns their salary, makes their money worth. I, personally, that's my pet peeve. 
I'm thinking if this is where the coach needs to make their money, then what have they been doing 99% yeah. of the time? <laughs> You're too late. Uh, it, uh, yeah, again, it's not all of what it. What do you it, think it, of that? So for me, to defend the cast is that's one of the ways to say, listen up here. Everyone watching, go look at it. Like, often you, you then get the shot of, you know, Seth, you going... <laughs> <laughs> And analysis. That's what you want to see, hey, right? Hey, you got right, 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 like, Yeah, no, but like <laughs> he knows what's going on. Yeah, of course, of course, I know what's behind the scenes as well. I've, I've <laughs> done, I've done the fair share of everything. For the for the car says you need to make a show and to say, listen, look at the car. Like this is where the coach comes in and he needs to step up. The team's not been pulling their weight. The team's slacking. They need to make that like. They need to make that change now. Yes, coaches absolutely can make a difference. If you are able to pull off a Braveheart level speech, right, in that one minute, and you get them all riled up, and they're just like, you know what? Yeah, actually, we can win this game. Like, if you can change the mental, you've earned your money. But if you've not done anything up until that point, that speech is not going to help much as well. So I get where you're coming from. I get where the casters are coming from. Uh, but if yeah. you are only cast or if you're only coaching for the like three minutes you have in timeouts every every old major then might want to find a different <laughs> profession in my opinion yeah. but then again hey i don't judge <laughs> so right. let's go back to let's go back to mina um <laughs> this year as we as we know uh mina was uh you know what some people not me but some people would call a one team region uh team falcons won all six um regionals <laughs> yeah or open qualifiers i guess and it's a kind of a level of dominance that we've only seen a few times. We saw it a bunch this year, actually, in North America. G2 obviously won the lion's share. Uh, Oceana, and then back in RLCSX, you had uh, then, then Sound, Sand Rock Gaming, or sorry, RLCS 2122. We had Sand Rock Gaming that turned to yeah. Falcons, and then BDS in RLCSX. And I've always had the idea that a team being super, super dominant is actually quite good for a region because it, it kind of raises the level of play for everyone else. Uh, we saw in Europe what happened after the BDS era was the best year probably we've ever seen in a year and a half after um, that happened. And then uh, I think North America is starting to get quite good again now that they have uh, a benchmark to hit with G2. Uh, so, you know, for players, you know, you're coaching all right, and th there's almost like this idea of there's this boogeyman that you have to go through to win. One, how do you feel like it influences the quality of the region? And two, how do you coach and get your players to sort of believe that they can beat this team that is like seems like they're untouchable at this point and, and give them the sort of mental stability to go in and compete every day like they can win even if everybody on the internet everybody is telling them that they have no chance uh first off everybody on the internet does not matter that's that's less than it's one. hard to tell um, kids that though uh, no 100 100 but like uh, uh i don't know i don't remember exactly who told it to me but like uh, the advice I got the other day was like, don't listen to advice from people you wouldn't ask for feedback, right? If you don't like, if you don't and like aren't already like in a position where you'd like take advice from someone, if they are critiquing you, that has nothing to do with what I'm doing. So that's that's a very simple one for me to just say, all right, cool. That's not worry about every uh, in the Netherlands we say uh, like house, stand and coke, so it's ha house, garden and kitchen. Uh, like just everyone that's just in their own home, garden, or kitchen, just critiquing, analyzing from home. Unless they bring up something new, that does not matter. The the people that we compete against, we practice against as well. Um, so Falcons, you play them in scrims. You see them in scrims. You analyze the games. You see what is going wrong. Um, and or you know they're improving as well. Uh, again, Falcons have a very, very good coaching staff on hand. Um, like, you know that there is just a, a bunch of things that they can do to improve as well. But you have th that thing you're working towards. We want to reach this. We want to see progression. And for me, win or lose, I don't necessarily care too much. Uh, it's going to sound silly, but I care more about the progression I can make with the team. So the lessons I can learn than, you know, this one series. And obviously, you know, if you, you, you keep falling short in those semifinals. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a four-time regional finalist. I have yet to win one. Of course, it hurts every time you lose. But ultimately, I think I'll learn from those experiences enough that at some point I make it. And that's that's worth it for me. So as long as you can get your team ambitious enough, motivated enough to keep working, that's more important to me. From your perspective with a team like that, do you think the players treat it the way Michael's describing, like this is a, a bar that we are chasing after and we're trying to, 
you know, achieve this or ascend past this? Or do you think it can yeah, even be? Yeah. So it's right, not, yeah, not, you, not something that they get discouraged by. For, for everyone. If you are competing and you are trying to become the person that's there, you're doing the wrong thing. You're trying to be better than them. Yeah. And you should do. And I, I do think that like having a stable bar, right? Like if you have a different team that's on top every week, it's very hard to kind of get that trajectory locked in. Whereas if you have that one team, there's definitely benefits to it. But I think in general, as a, as a region, there's a lot of progression to make. If you have a team that's clearly on top, like, like Falcons is now, you can say, listen, what they do is working. We need to work on what they are doing because they keep beating us. How do we work on that? And if everyone works on that, the entire region is collectively fixing that mistake or collectively fixing what they are kind of getting beat on. And that, as long as there is enough guidance, good coaching, good people working behind the scenes or enough ambition with the players themselves, you will find the region improves overall. Yes, 100%. Yeah, I think especially with a, an expansion region like Mina uh, going and watching Falcons, like look genuinely like the best team in the world for a large majority of the last tournament. It's got to be quite motivating, right? Because it's like if you're a team who's taken them to five or even beaten them or got really close, it's like we're that close to beating a team that could that might be the best team in the world. If we can get there, if we can get to like our consistency like them, that means we're like right there with the best teams in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah and yeah uh, sorry uh, yeah like what even like works is if you look at falcons play against teams on major right and falcon stakes uh goes to like falcon in in round three in the group stage they they swept g2 right they're in three and oh and then you think back listen we played them twice in the events we took a game off them every single time did we do better than g2 mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we're not a better team overall. You can't say that. That's not something you can do. It's a completely different stage. But it is a how close are we really? And it is a wake-up call. Like, oh, wait, we're, we're not that far off. And I do think, in general, there's a, there's a case to be made for the entire world to kind of uh, have gotten a lot closer skill-wise. I think this was one of the most enjoyable majors I've seen in a very long time because I felt there was such a like large group of teams where if you... You know, like you, it used to be like, oh, if someone made a case for some team to win, you'd be like, that's outrageous. What are you talking about? Are you, you know, how long have you held your breath? But uh, right now, there's just so many teams where you could like, oh yeah, Fury could win the thing. Yeah, of course they can. G2 can win the thing. Yeah, Space Station on the day, they can win the thing. G2, Gen G, bunch of European teams, Falcons, of course they can win. The, like, no one's going to dispute that. Of course, there will always be someone to dispute it, but like, on their day, they can win the event, and it's as simple as that. And the consistency with the top tier level teams, that is still beyond impressive. But to see a team like, you know, the team you've been competing against or region go up against it, consistently make those numbers, that does bits, and that does bits for your confidence as well, hundred percent. Yeah, and and the depth, I think, is something that's become kind of a, it's a, been a big comp, pop uh, piece of conversation throughout the year. Uh, because the two majors have looked so competitive, especially in that top eight, nine teams. But in terms of the depth of Mina, it's, it's, all, it's often compared to like the depth of Sam because they're kind of like partner regions where they have this one team at the top that everyone's, and then they have other teams at the bottom. But it seems like Sam is viewed as a much deeper region um, just because the Mina teams that have gone, the Mina two seeds that have gone to the majors this year haven't fared out that well. What do you think from, from someone who coached and, and, and like you said, you're in scrims, you're doing replays. How do you feel that the Mina... Mina as a region has to what they have to do or, or what the trajectory they have to be to be on is to get to that level of Sam where you have people saying, Man, they got six teams that could go to round five of Swiss at a major, or make top eight at a major. Because it seems like right now everyone kind of agrees that Mina and Sam at the top are very similar, but Sam kind of has uh progressed a little quicker on the from that like two to three to like seven, three to eight level. I mean, so what what I've seen a lot, and this is this is um it has a lot to do with what is kind of happening with the the practice behind the scenes. So to give you a little bit of insight, the reason why I think Mina and, and South America are as close to what the top regions are is because they have a lot more opportunity. A region like APAC, they can't scrim against Europe. They can't scrim against NA. Sub-Saharan Africa, they can't scrim. So despite uh, Australia, or OC, uh, having been part of ROCS for as long as they have, the kind of... Um, exchange of information or exchange of practice has been limited to those worldwide international events. And it's part of the reason why, it, like in my opinion, O still has a lot to catch up on every single time. They keep catching up with what the level was, but then obviously the other regions have gone up as well. I think the exchange of information between the Middle East and Europe 
has been successful at the top, but anything below the top is very limited still, where a top four team in MENA and a top four team in Europe do not scrim. Top four in Europe will scrim with like a top eight to top one, obviously, like a top eight range in Europe, but then they won't scrim against number four in MENA, which uh, has to do with various reasons from uh, a big culture difference where MENA has, um, especially in like, uh, previous year there's been lots of issues with people and uh well religion's a big theme there so they, they have their prayer times this just means they can be 50 minutes late that's not acceptable in europe if you are 50 minutes late they just like say no worries and they're you're on a, a, a no scrim list so you kind of get like written off as a team we're not scrimming anymore whereas only the top two really consistently get asked for those scrims or a top three um or you must have the connections uh that with the language barrier and i do think with sam it's been a lot more exchange, especially now that we've seen Complexity and Furia make the swap between regions. That's a bunch of information, a bunch of practice, a bunch of experience that all of a sudden comes into a region and everyone can kind of feast on, right? Oh, whoa, they've brought all these new things. Let's let's enjoy that. You can analyze all you want. I can look at a G2 replay, show it to my players and be like, listen, we got to play like this. Or we got to do this. or We got to fix this so we can do this. But that doesn't give you that practice. That doesn't give you that experience. And I do feel like South America has the edge on that a little bit over the Middle East. Yeah. You talked a lot about scrims, but do you think that, or do you see that a team like Team Falcons is proving the same kind of opponent as they are in the actual RLCS competition? Is it is it one on one? Is it completely different? Do they just try different stuff there? How does that work? Um, I think it's hard to make a comparison between scrims and, and match day. Moves are different. Tactics are different. Are you trying something? Are you working on something? What kind of scrim is it? For me, I have three types of scrims. I have a scrim where I warm up. I have a scrim where I practice something specific and I have a scrim where I want them to try. And the difference between those three is vast where I feel like if you are a decent 1800, if we are warming up, you can score a couple of goals on us. But if we are practicing match day and the energy is locked in, you're not touching the ball, I'm sorry. So there's, it's such a big difference in skill level and how you kind of approach these scrims that it, it it's not a yes or no answer in there that I can give on that question. Well, isn't that really annoying, though, if you're trying to try in a scrim and the other team is just trying new stuff? No. Does that not matter? The scrimming is always going to be annoying, but for me, the idea of having stuff be depending on one scrim is... Not the way forwards. Mm -hmm. Games in Rocket League are too short. I don't think a single team really sits down and says, we're going to scrim this one thing for the full hour. People don't have that kind of attention span. I think you should have a transition. You can take several games and be like, listen, these five games we did really well, but these last two games, I could tell the, the energy was off. Uh, I can tell this was not working. Or, you know, you're doing two hours, three hours consecutively. The first scrim, I want you to warm up because we need to do well. You can't fault a team for doing the same thing because they're an hour later, because you want to try. You have to learn how to use that practice. If you compare it to, again with other esports, for example, lots of other um, esports, they practice against themselves, right? If you are practicing in League of Legends, you're playing against the B team from the same organization or the sub roster or the, the coaches, or and you, you've got five hours, good luck, right? That's that's your your scrim. So it, the, the difference is so vast in how you practice that you kind of have to be flexible with the way you approach practice. And yes, you can get upset because you know at some point you can tell the attentions off with the opponents. But if you don't learn from those, then hey, good luck competing. That's tough. <laughs> uh, you've you've got the experience from Mina. What you hear from Europe, at least on Twitter, is that some teams like to troll scrims. Yeah. Does that Happen is that have you experienced that? Of course, yeah. There is there's people that just don't respect other people. If you think uh, an opponent's bad, you don't want to scrim and you manage to set it up. They didn't really ask you. The, it happens. Uh, that happens in me now. That happens. I think in every region. It's also just bad days, right? Uh, we all have bad days. If you're having a bad day during scrims, but I do think people are too soon to make like assumptions based on a singular game or a singular, right? If you've won five games and you then miss a simple ball, are you now trolling the scrim? According to most Rocket League professionals, the answer is yes. 
how how quickly is that like opinion set? I guess, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> beast, um, man, thank you so much for carving out some time. You mentioned Absolutely. earlier the Twitch stream. Obviously, we've talked at length about your coaching stuff, but that's not all you do. So talk a little bit about the content, maybe what's on your channel, when you stream. If there's anyone here that is wanting to learn, I think this is a fantastic place to do so. So give us some information about uh, the other things that you do. Yeah, I mean, again, appreciate the, the chance to be here as well. Um, I, I stream frequently. I'm, I'm full time as a coach, so I make my money coaching on the site. I love to stream uh, most afternoons, early mornings for NA folks. I will be live uh, on my channel. Like I said, I do a lot of just playing. Uh, I like to just have a good time. I love music. I will sing a lot. Uh, I really enjoy singing. Um, I just uh -huh. mainly make sure that it's good. So honestly, yeah. Just swing by but if you have questions I'm, I'm always down to have a, a real conversation i'm very open about what i do very passionate i'm very honest i want to become the best i will work for it so that's what i uh, i promise go. that's what i got yeah Legend. some lovely guitars behind you as well uh, and i, I can tell you as someone that's heard him sing he is good well look we're, oh, yeah. we're gonna drop the uh <laughs> we'll drop the link here in the chat and we'll drop it in the description below for the youtube uh video beastbound thank you so much man we appreciate it and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Much love, fellas. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. All right, let's Yo. jump into our next segment. Big shout out again to Beastbound. Thank you for yeah. uh, taking some time to chat with us. Now, listen, we've got... <laughs> Did I just hear a dog bark? Yeah. Me too. Probably Lando. <laughs> Lando just wants to be on the podcast so <laughs> bad. Producer. It's insane. Uh, we've got off-season roundup. Obviously, there has been a lot changing. Even though the season's not technically over, we got World Championship in September. Um, but a lot has been happening. I mean, we've got the, I mean, the big one. Let's just go ahead and get right to it. Ahmad has decided to retire. And that is just, that's so sad. Yeah, dude. I mean, I think most people would consider him the quote-unquote godfather of Mina. Um, the most influential player in Mina, along with Okalid. Um, him, Okalid, and Senzo making up the um, making up the first ever sort of like notable Mina roster with San Rock Gaming. I said just the two of them because I know they were quite popular in show matches with uh, and uh, Okalid, obviously, who honestly might be retired too. We have no idea yeah. what's up with him. He might be playing yeah. the world championship, he might not. We don't know, he might sip a close and just never hear from him again, but. Yeah, no, right. No. He might do a typical and never announce his retirement, but actually, you know. Yeah. Um, but in either way, you know, they're legends that, they, you know, major finalists, which, um, you know, not many people can say they've done. You know, the yep. majority of major finals seem to be made by either Seiko or Fatira. So um, it's tough to, to make it there. It's, it's incredibly hard. And Ahmad was able to show up to the Copper Box in, uh, three, two years ago and, you know, come a game away in that first series from being a major champion. Uh, it's also... He's also got one of the most iconic um, casting moments as well. Mm -hmm. When when Johnny just screams, oh my God. <laughs> and then, you know, an underrated one was the seventh from heaven. CJ, yeah, CJ's yeah, first true. ever let kind of notable call uh, in that great series against, I think it was Gen G. Um, yeah, just um, a wonderful player. Seems like he's beloved by most most of the players he played with and and and, and the scene. Um, so also you know, last ever Rocket League tweet was making fun of VK Salem. So, you know, finished right. with a bang, even <laughs> if the, the final major didn't do great. But, um, you know, I will well, be missed. He'll be a he's a he's a he's a kind of a kind of a staple of International Rocket League for the last three years. And it'll be it'll be weird seeing international lands without without Ahmad there uh, going forward. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he was for a whole generation of Rocket League Esports fans, mm -hmm. he was one of the faces of an emerging region, which he helped put on the map. So, yeah, it's sad to see him go. I mean, uh, what what would have what could have been with right. that Rule One roster with with everything that Mina was cooking up? But uh, I mean, there's still so many great players that. I don't think it will really cause much of a shockwave for the region, but uh, yeah, it's uh, unfortunate. Well, that's just the beginning of it. Um, we got Cloud9. 
And there's just a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of an odd situation. They do drop the full roster. Um, there's also been, you know, the prior rumor that Lion Blaze and Percy were looking to um, separate from Zanil anyways. But Cloud9 drops the roster, but they put a note that they're looking to stay in Rocket League. So maybe some unsigned team at the moment, maybe in a maybe over in Europe. I mean, what do you yeah. guys think about that? Well, I, I wrote up on this for Shift. You can actually go read the article about it on Shift RLE. Whoa. RLE. Um, okay. Keep and I, I, I kind of put one more time. Uh, Shift RLE. GG, the home for Rocket League news and Intel. You can also find all the information about scheduling for the Shift Summer League, which will be on this oh. channel during its league play stage uh, and the plan, I believe. So gotcha. um, playoff, well, play yeah, play off. yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, well, the second part, um, but. Uh, I kind of highlighted three teams. I think that Cloud9 may have identified as potential teams that maybe provided a better chance at, co at competing. Um, no disrespect to the C9 team. They were very good. They were definitely a major contending team in North America. But I think maybe with the team kind of breaking down and the teams that are available, you're kind of like, how oh, we can maybe go in a different direction. Um, the first team, the most obvious team, I think that people will be linking C9 to is um, Rettles, Magic Bear, and Cheese. Obviously, comes with a big fan base. Rattles is a, is a superstar in his own right. Uh, and they're, they were a major contending team all season. They made a major. They were had an off second split, but, you know, were in position to make the world championship. I think the Snowmen, right? Like, mm. you look at the old Come C9 on. team, the, the legendary C9 team. They picked up a team of young players who are really starting to gain a lot of traction in the scene, and they might want to run back to that. And then uh, the last one is a team that was signed up for uh, SSL to play together. Uh, which is the Peeps, which are back for the 19th time. Uh, Mist, AJ, and Gyro have decided to oh. team together. This is not a team that's the They haven't tweeted that this is their team they're going to be playing right, with. Right. They're just kind of a picking yeah. roster, but they, you know, if they do well, they'll probably Who stick knows? together, uh, at least for a while. So that could be a team that also, you know, I think if C9 wants to go to the OG route, sign a bunch of veterans, bank on their experience being what differentiates them and make majors, um, I think that that's also a team that could be uh, picked up by them so yeah tons of options um and it'll be exciting to see them stay in the game it's cool that they want to still be in the game especially yeah. with how much org insecurity there is now it, it's a bit of a weird one because they've not been with the, the roster for that long right it's just been yeah. a couple months april i believe is when they picked up the squad yeah um and it is very common this year to see organizations drop the entire roster and probably pick the same or a different roster up uh, come 2025 or at least some date closer to next RLCS season. Because yeah. even though there are going to be some off-season tournaments to play, if you're not making it to well London in the first place or Dallas Worlds uh, later on in the year, you know there's not that much to play for. There was one thing that could change that for a lot of organizations, and that is the Esports World Cup, because... The organizations get a huge bag of money just for competing and placing relatively well in a in a multitude of different esports, right? So if they can add Rocket League to that lineup, that would make them quite a, a, a good bit of money. And an esport an esports organization like Cloud9 is one of the prime contenders to be in all, as many games as they can. So. Yeah. This pickup was a little bit of, like, are they doing it for RLCS or do they have other motives? Um, and now it seems like there's only two spots per region plus some wild cards for the Rocket League portion of that event. So they might realize that they're not making it in and that might be the reason that they're dropping it. It's not very clear yeah, why. Because G2 exactly. and Gen G are also partnered orgs and you don't want to, you know, yeah. you're thinking we can't. That get means them, that guys. maybe it's not your turn to yeah. be there. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a weird one, but yeah, yeah. In a larger scheme of things, it's nothing weird to see an organization the size of Cloud Nine drop their roster and come back in a couple months. Mm -hmm. Well, to to Michael's note, it is nice that they've at least expressed interest in uh, yeah. the Rocket League space. So that's always a positive. We got Although two... Cloud Nine have done that for years without picking up a roster. Well, yeah, yeah. It's it, yeah. Go back to that. They, huh? they have. They... To, are they coming back? Yeah. April Fool's we, um, no. yearly tweets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've also got two SAM rosters being completely dropped with W7M and Crew. Um, and I think this is kind of, it's one of those things where, you know, when it hits 
kind of your 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 more popular your mainstream or or long standing regions it's just going to hit even harder in the emerging regions or the ones that don't get the same support like Sam doesn't have a big RLCS broadcast the same way that NA does um and so a lot of times those orgs well like like Yin's outline there's really no really no opportunity from now until 2025 unless you're at the world championship to to be represented so yeah i mean one of the things i want to talk about this one is ajg specifically who seems to have gone to europe i don't know if like there's been any talk about that but he competed in a LAN with two spanish players a couple weeks ago and then seems to have signed up for um shift summer league with stizzy and dorito i think is the is the team but i could be wrong um, I'd have to look that up, but that sounds yeah, about right. But I, I know, I know he's playing with Stizzy. I just can't remember what the third one is. So, um, could be that you know, hey, they told him, listen, we're not going to keep you, and he said, you know, I, I, I'm trying to go play with you know Spanish-speaking players up in, um, so in up in Europe. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it'd be cool to see him move because it'll be the first time we've ever seen a player actually go to Europe, like yeah. like cross region into Europe, which is you know we always we often see Europe as the sort of uh, the the Dante's Inferno of Rocket League. No one goes there because you have to compete with all those French players. So it'd be cool to see a, a cross-region transfer to Europe. Uh, and I think AJG can do it because, you know, he was looking quite good back on complexity with two, with a Spanish player. So maybe uh, maybe he, you know, maybe he stays there and, and, and we see a Sam player make some, make some problems up there. Mm. CRR's back over there. Maybe they link up again. Yeah, I mean, if he's smart, but I, I think so. I think CRR is will probably stay on complexity because they seem to have built their program a bit around him, and they, I believe, they're trying to go back to NA. Sorry if that's a leak, but I believe they, they're going to try to go back there. Um, so maybe he says, AJG, I'm sorry, I kicked you. Why don't you come back to? Why don't you come back to North America? I need, I need someone to fill the gaps and miss, uh, missed open shots in overtime. Okay, see, you just didn't even have to do that. <laughs> what the heck? That but, was so unnecessary. But uh, yeah, so I mean, they were great together. I think it'd be smart for them to team up. I think it was a mistake for them to leave each other. So it would be cool to see them eat NA or EU um, to, to, to play together and, and finish, what, uh, finish what they started. The real conspiracy theory here is, is, of course, that he moved to Europe just because he wasn't eligible to play in the Shift Summer League otherwise. Oh. Well, you know, for a, for a, for a <laughs> tournament as as prestigious and you know, kind of the crown jewel of Rocket oh, yeah. League esports, you know, he sees his opportunity. Do that. Yeah, that's cool though. It's cool that he's kept relationships with with, with players yep. outside of the region enough to be able to go and do that. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, you have this whole South American community. You have a Spanish community, which is obviously uh, much smaller, but especially outside of Brazil the south american community isn't that large either so it's cool to kind of see them link up sometimes yeah totally well unfortunately we have uh some more bad news and it actually gets worse we've got an ssa org snakes den uh they are accused of ghosting the team dude just completely yeah. not paying dude. them dude, uh, dude, this is so dumb why would you ever expect why would you sign to an org called snakes den <laughs> <laughs> the name kind of gives it I away. Was, that's, I was that's I was signed to this team called uh, Scam. Uh, we will scam you, and we will <laughs> not pay you FC. And then they didn't. They didn't pay me. What the like? I come on, know. guys. I, why are stay we talking about the, Face Clan? Stay true to the brand. <laughs> They're snakes. Yeah, yeah. It's like the. It's, I don't know. It's like I went to the bar. That's I went to this bar last night called We Hit You in the Head with a Baseball Bat. You can. I can't believe what happened. You know. But seriously, <laughs> that sucks. Uh, bedroom orgs. I'm tired of them. We need some sort of regulate regulatory body for esports orgs because we do. It's getting and, too and, ridiculous. And what I was talking about earlier too, like the you know what hits the your your larger regions. You know that might hit like the tier two of NA or EU, but that's going to hit hard in an SSA and an APAC, those kinds of things. Uh, well, it's just, it's unfortunate because those players are just trying to find a home. They're trying to find some support. They're trying to, you know, find a, a way to earn off of what they've worked so hard to achieve and, and you know, to be done wrong like this is, I can imagine, extremely frustrating. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. We're hoping it's, for the uh, best for that squad and hopefully they can find a, an org. Yeah, you guys can contact me. I'm actually starting my own org. What's um, it called? 
What's it called? It's called uh, Financial Fraud, uh, White Collar Crime. Uh, FF. Esports. <laughs> yeah. FF Esports. FF, financial Fraud. Yeah, you know, actually, got... it's, it, it's been a while since uh, Shift had to write an article. This time it was Finn, last time it was me writing about G1. Yeah. yeah. Where it's just, you know, there's almost nothing positive to get out of it. It's just misery. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone wants to be my enemy. Yeah, you just feel for him. And, it sucks because, um, you know, I'm sure when Snake Den started, they did have good intentions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, his name's so stupid. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, we talk about other orgs like G1, where, I mean, Kenny Vaccaro, I, I genuinely believe he he wanted to create a really good org and then he got himself in, in, in a hole and couldn't get out of it. Um, but, you know, you got to own up to it. You got you to gotta just, you, got, you know, you got to do enough research and planning beforehand to realize, do I actually have enough money or am I like, I'll figure it out as I go. Um, and that's why I say we need some sort of regulatory body. You should have to apply to be an esports organization because it ruins the, the professional sort of aspect, the industry of esports mm-hmm. when you have teams coming in that aren't paying players because it, it damages yeah. the ecosystem. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it takes away all the faith that people yeah. have in because there's there's a lot of it is built on trust, especially uh, with the takeover of, of uh, Shift and everything we see behind the scenes. A lot of it takes a long time to figure out because you know there's money involved, there's legal issues. It takes a long time to get things sorted. So all the all the while you have to have trust that things are going to be working itself out. And if they don't, yeah, you need to own up. And owning up, G1, by the way, is not publishing a 20-minute video straight to Twitter and then not doing anything afterwards. That's not owning up. Yeah, that is that was a tough watch. Sure. Well, hopefully we don't have any more of those stories throughout this offseason. Uh, but we do have another roster release. Actually just went live today. Um, M80 had a, a very unique venture for the Rocket League esports space, something that really hasn't been done before. And unfortunately, while I, I still think that was a great team, um, comprised of, of very talented players. They did not yield the results that they were after. And after the season, they have all separated and gone their own ways. I think Jorias and Nass are both uh, back home. And obviously, Michael just mentioned that AJ is, um, you know, he's looking around and trying to find a new roster for next season as well. So, yeah, that is it's a bizarre, bizarre result, you know, for a, a well-meaning project. I think that's, that's one of the most, in, yeah. in my opinion, like if you just look at the talent, that's one of the, the biggest like why did it not work what if it's not really a what if kind of thing because we saw it happen but it's just, it's just weird like, it just uh, i just it's it was just so weird confusing. yeah yeah like like you know there's a lot of ways that you can like a, a rocket league roster can go wrong and i think you know i mean he was like oh man what if they don't mesh personally we have them living together what if they don't like right. each other you know what if what if uh you know one of the players gets homesick you know mm-hmm. you know nasa's traveling back and forth what if that I don't think anyone could have predicted what if we keep losing in the quarterfinals after after just farming Swiss. It's just a bizarre way for a team to go wrong. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we'll ever see it again. It's one of those things where in five years, someone's going to make a YouTube video called like the weirdest RLCS roster of all time. And it's just going to be about M80 and their inability to beat anybody in a top eight match. I mean, they lost, no offense to TSM. They're a good team. They lost to TSM who didn't yeah. make another top eight. They lost this cloud nine like Dignitas, who didn't even make a, like they didn't make a, didn't win another top eight series the rest of the season. It was just a bizarre, bizarre season. So all the best to the players because I think they're all quite good. Mm-hmm. It's just that they had some sort of like like luck debuff for this whole. You, season. you want to talk about a boogeyman? Yeah. It's a quarterfinal match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah was, well, in terms of there. the in terms of the uh, MAT, the the organization releasing their roster that we all saw that coming the, the european players had been home for a while already yeah. uh, back uh, back in europe it, it was about to happen and this is another case of an organization that is really actually building up the trust in the ecosystem because mat have been as far as i can tell really good uh when it comes to to building a rocket league roster mm-hmm. i mean yeah. really giving it they're all and yeah. yeah, not getting the results, obviously, but really trying. And uh, I will not be surprised to see them back in a couple of months to half a year, maybe, and uh, see them compete. Uh, they're again my favorite to, to sign Rettles team. I 
think. Oh, I think that if I had to put $100 on it, I know nothing. Mm. I really don't. But if I had to put $100 on it, I think they're going to go the complete opposite way, which is let me build, let, let's sign the team that we, is like, like we know they were, they, like everything's from a system perspective is, is, is on good. And then we just have yeah. to help you play well. From one extreme to the other. And like- uh, yeah, I mean, M80 is a, is a call, is, they come from Call of Duty or their, sorry, their brass comes from Call of Duty because I believe their brass comes from Phase or Xset. Um, and right, so, yeah, from Xset. Yeah, yeah, so I think that, and I know Rettles is, is pretty plugged in around with Optic and, and some of the other COD players. So I would not be surprised if they, if they end up with that roster for sure. Or at least it's an interesting. For I think M80 is just a really interesting organization altogether because they're pretty new. Mm-hmm. Of course, the the ownership has some experience with Exet, but they're not a small organization because they're in multiple bigger esports, yeah. but also not one of the top dogs. You know, you know, is going to stick around anyway. So they just kind of have to prove themselves all the time, and I think. I I have no clue how it uh, how it turns out for them, but maybe even their performance and their financial situation with like their Valorant roster might you know steer them in a different direction when it comes to picking up a new Rocket League roster because mm-hmm. they're a pretty small organization as far as I can tell, so they have to make choices. Yeah, they've yeah. yet to find their flagship team, uh, I think, and I think they yeah. were really hoping that this Rocket League team was going to be their flagship team. Uh, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. tough. So, I mean, yeah. look at KC. I believe KC's best performing team is it was their Rocket League team before the split, and it was uh, it was it was. Quite... Um, I think you're right. In the bigger esports, at least, well, mm, their um, French league, League of Legends team, like the LFL, yeah. is yeah. really good, like top yeah. tier. And but then they don't do their well on LEC, LEC right? team, no, it's not not great. Um, one of their players. It, for um, Team Fight Tactics, which of course is a much much smaller esport, like barely exists, but um, you know it's still there. Uh, I think what the player is like a friend of Kameto as well, and he's mm-hmm. one of the best in the world. He's just winning everything. Yeah. So if so, you're yeah. purely looking at the percentages, then maybe it's TFT. But Rocket League, of course, absolutely. It felt like their flagship team, especially the way that that the viewers were coming in and stuff. Like yeah, how like they're, the community was most hyped up. Of, I mean, yeah. I'm sure. They were most hyped up for League because Kamato comes from League, but the yeah. Rocket League stuff. And I think M80 was hoping for a similar sort of performance from the uh, from the from from the Rocket League team. So listen, I hope they stay in. I really do think they're going to sign another good roster. I think they're going to take it a different direction in terms of how they build it. But uh, I like having M80. I like having orgs that know what they're doing in Rocket League. It's very nice, um, and I think we've been blessed with a lot of really smart orgs, at least lately, with G2, Gen G. Carmine, mean, Vitality, uh, BDS, know, mates. Falcons, Mates. Like, they all know what they're doing. And it's really nice to have all the top teams, be teams, oh. Space Station, uh, Complexity, teams that know, yeah. like, they're real, actual people that know what how to do esports, which is, is, is always nice. Uh, like we, got one, we got one final thing. This uh, uh, unfolded Ooh. today. We have European players, Crispy and Simas who have announced their journey across the pond. They are going to be competing in CRL uh, in North America and have announced that they are looking for a team in North America. More European invasion. A couple players went home. Joriez went home. Nas went home. So we had to fill their shoes. And we got Crispy and Simas. Yeah, I mean, they're looking for a team for NARLCS. Yes. Yep. Uh, as far as I know, but they're there for the collegiate mm-hmm. programs. Which, which I, I, I want to say, I think it's so cool that players are yeah. getting to get an, an a, a, you know, secondary education based on their, their Rocket League skills. I think yeah, that's, that's, that's what it's yeah. all about, man. Mm-hmm. Set I mean, yourself it, up in the future. We've talked about this before. It just does not exist in Europe. It right. does not happen. Like the school system is completely not built like that. If you mm-hmm. have an esports organization within your university, I mean, it's basically the same as running a league with friends. Like, yeah. th- there's no budget or anything for that. That you're definitely not getting a scholarship for it. Not that you would really need one because tuitions is like one or two k per year. But um, it's just it doesn't exist to have that kind of facility and to have that facilitated in NA is awesome. Uh, I dread for Simas to have his name pronounced Simas all the time. He's gonna <laughs> hate that. I already know. We've had him. Uh, we had well, that him on. Southern um, draw is gonna hit <laughs> for sure. I mean, he's um, 
uh, what's his, what nationality again? Um, so this is uh, like Irish, Lithuanian. Lithuanian or something? Lithuanian, yeah. that's it. Yeah. But yes, he lives or had lived in Ireland. It's a very Irish accent. Yeah. Unmistakable. Incre- incredible to listen to him. But he's going to have a, quite a different experience in, in the like that, Well, that's another part of it, too. They get to travel a little bit and spend some time in a new country. And, uh, Absolutely. Where really is really Concord cool College? I want to look. Because I think they're I think West Virginia. Concord College. Yeah, I heard West Virginia. Yeah. Man, listen, no offense to them, because I'm sure that's how they got it. If I'm going from Europe, Europe to play college, I want USC, UCLA. I okay, want, buddy. Okay. I want, you, I want Pepperdine. Those, okay. Those I want schools, Oregon. Those schools want, are not throwing out full rides for esports yet. 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 I agree. So, yet. Question for you guys. Here's my question. Yeah. If this becomes a thing where you see a lot of players getting full rides, especially if they're willing to bring them in from Europe. Who's going to be the first top player, like really top player to say, you know what, I, I feel like I can balance RLCS and uh, co- a college education and I'd like it for it to be for free. I'm going to go to college while I'm playing like real top player. Like I'm talking like major level. Do you think oh, there's from anybody? NA or from another? NA or you. NA or you. It's got to happen it, soon. I don't think it will because professional Rocket League, if, if they're a top player, professional Rocket League, like your earning opportunity far outweighs you could just you could do college after that's true i think like when, for when, me, you're, when you're 23 and you're on your decline you know you're no longer at a top four point you're not making 10k a month you know winning five thousand per tournament then yeah. you can on your cool down uh you know take the college route do you it think just, that to me the, will... the, the formula doesn't make sense to like pr- spread yourself so thin right. you know so, you, you, you've got this awesome opportunity with professional play so i, I mean I, I just see players fully pursuing that while they can so my so here's a follow-up question i guess then because i i kind of agree with you but what if you know a player and i don't want to use him because i think he's washed but i, I think he's around the age <laughs> easy i don't think he's, i genuinely don't think he's washed but i think of a player like like arsenal didn't have a great year last year still has a bit in the tank showed a little bit but Let's say he says, you know what, maybe I got one, two years left as a major contending player. Let me go to, let me go, let me see if I can get this full ride because it's still a full ride is still a full ride, no matter yeah. what you, how yeah, much yeah. money you're making. Yeah, I can see. Do you that. think we'll see, but do you think there's a chance that once one player does that, it'll be kind of like reverse pro sports where this, the college circuit is like the seniors tour where like we <laughs> actually have like people watching because you got like a bunch of players yes. that were like fan favorite pros back in the day. Yes. You got like, you got like yeah, like Ar- like in two years, you got like Arsenal Reddles like reunited on on you know uni- at the University of Arizona, and on the other hand, you got you got like Garrett G has decided to go to college finally, and like people are watching because <laughs> they want to see their old favorite players. Do you think it would be very funny? That's the perfect formula. That's the perfect yeah. trajectory. That's all for what all I've always thought. Because yeah. it's it's so it's so backwards in the process. Like with hmm. traditional sports, as a kid, your body's growing and you're you know, fine tuning your, your motor skills, and then you hit adulthood and then you are, you know, capable, not everybody, but, but professionals are capable of, of competing at, but esports is so backwards where it's like a lot of times they are, their best years are from 13 to 19. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I, I rock and league esports, rock let's league. be honest. Well, I think in other I esports, think, it's like 18 till 25, maybe. And, and, and a lot of that is dependent on, the style of game, when it was released, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think it's fair to say like 25 to 30 ish is definitely always going to be on the upper side of professional play for gaming. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that there won't be unique cases. I'm not saying there won't be people older than that. We'll have our LeBron James at 35 competing. Yeah, in he's, already, he's playing for OG. We're going to have it. Right now, okay. Actually. But I think it's the perfect setup where you can play in your your best years for gaming when you have the least amount of responsibilities. You know, a lot of these kids don't even have, you know, have bills yet. You know, they never even heard of that, and so their 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 mind is free to focus on this thing. And then you have college, which is perfect because you know you've done this career, you now get to go on and and use the back half of that career to give yourself that platform for what's next. So yeah. I think it actually makes perfect sense. This is what I'm hoping. Okay like two three years from now it would like i don't it's not gonna happen but i would love this 
CRL worlds, okay, DreamHack Dallas, like it usually is. We get we get NRG, Squishy, Justin, Gergi against Vitality, but they're K dot Alpha, sorry, K dot Fairy Peak and Scrub. Turbo I think <laughs> is gone at this point, but they're playing for like universities, and like I promise you. It'll get watched more than the world's final. It, that that would be those people's... old men will be yeah. literally. It's gonna be 500k <laughs> concurrent. I'm not joking. Minimum. Like, like uh, it would be more. Like we're not watching. We're not watching mode in the finals. We're watching no. Garrett and K Dot battle one last time. <laughs> I mean, if we were time. serious esports, this is literally a show match for world championship next year. Or yeah, something. but we're not a serious esports, so we don't have to. Unfortunate. Like, torture yeah. ourselves with this. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I just saw that the. Um, Crispy and Samus are going to a town called Athens. Oh, Georgia. So, Athens, Georgia? No, West Virginia. Oh, okay. I, so I, I, I hope they have a great time at the Acropolis, where the Parthenon is. <laughs> it's like the same thing, dude. West Virginia and Greece are very similar. A lot of, a lot of water, you know? Definitely not a flyover state. Well, to, to, to bring us back full circle... Crispy and CMOS competing on the same team, by the way, Concord, like they mentioned. Those are two players that both had... Um, anywhere from 9th to 11th to obviously 15th, 16th. And, and I think Crispy's team and CMOS also may have missed one or two events, uh, but they were, they were in and out. Um, I think they are talented prospects. It's definitely going to be, uh, I think that that is in the East conference and the East for CRL is what's so, so stout already. So um, it's going to be, you know, even more difficult to compete in the Eastern conference. Um, CRL, I'm excited to hear more about it. it. Surely, if schools are picking it up, it's going to exist in the fall. It may just not be a two-semester thing. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's been kind of radio silence from Psionics, but uh, surely we can count on CRL for the All fall. Right, quickly, before we move on, Crispy CMS plus one, let's say, top 12 level NA player. Yeah. Uh, where do, do we think that they're a top eight team in North America? Pushing for it, yeah, like in and out. Yeah, I would say they're on the same level as current, like as the old, like recently released Cloud Nine roster. Sure. And like, sure. Um, what's another one I can think of? I don't know why I'm, but like TSM. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. To say that they're instantly like clearly. No, we're not going to do that again. Top we're eight not, or not, top yeah. six. I'm. I'm not. I'm not on that. On that level yet, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in and out. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not yeah. going to do that. Any EU could come sense. over and get NA because guess what happened when EU came <laughs> over this year? Got... Whoa! <laughs> Sent home. All right. All right. So we've got our next segment. We call this Silence the Doubters. This is the SSL edition. If you don't know what SSL is, what are you doing? This is a shift summer league. So listen, here's how this works. If you have never seen this before, we all select a player, a team. Maybe Whatever, maybe. really. Yeah, something, <laughs> a, na a person, place, or thing, a noun. <laughs> a we noun. select uh, someone to say that we believe in when maybe the community has shown a little bit of doubt. And I'll just go ahead and kick us off here. Uh, for Shift Summer League, for the league play, I think that Juicy Justin is going to return to absolute top-tier form. I think he's going to be back in the conversation for maybe a top six, seven, eight player in the region. Oh. Um, I think the Rebellion performance throughout the season was subpar. They had a bad month. Let's be yeah. honest. They had a really but, but, bad but month. It, Killed their season. Even, even, even if you just look across the board, I still had higher expectations for them. At the beginning of the season, I thought that would be a, a team that is like consistently fighting for semifinals. Like I did not think that they would be worried in Swiss stage. I certainly didn't think they would miss a top 16. Um, and so I think that, that that team definitely could have and should have performed better. I like the, the talent on that roster. I think two pieces is, is legit, uh, you know, a, a top tier talent still developing, but um, I, I like that team. I like Parth. I like the fact that they continue to believe in one another. And I still think Justin's got it. I still think he's got it. I look at him move around the field. I think he is capable. I think he is, you know, on par with, with, uh, Still in that SA tier talent as far as capability, but he's got to prove it. That team's got to be effective as a unit. So far, they haven't done so, but I think league play will harken back to the Justin uh, peak times, and it will it will give him the 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 juice that he needs. It's going to be yeah, tough I mean, because NA is stacked. It is. 
But yeah, it is definitely a chance for him to prove himself outside of RLCS. Yeah, and and and, and Shopify as well. I mean, like I said, yeah. they had a they had a catastrophic month, right? If you take out the the catastrophic month that was open qualifiers two and three, where they missed the regional that came last place. Yeah, they had an eighth, they had a fourth, eighth, eighth, second. That puts them right on the major hunt, the world championship hunt. Uh, but I would agree that I don't think they should. They, 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 I mean, they should have been making every top eight. There's yeah, no, just because they had a bad, eight. that month was off. Mm-hmm. Like that's a third of the season. Um, but I think they finished so strongly. And I think a lot of people, myself included, thought that they should have been, and they would have performed better at the LAN than OG did because they have a lot uh, more aggressive and mechanical of a play style. Um, so it's, you know, I agree because Justin, Mr. Juicy Justin, mm. I think him and his team have to prove that we're right. Because if they, they come up to. there and they look mid again, then we're like, well, my fault. They just peaked one regional. My fault. Um, yeah, Jens, what about you? Who 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 are you silencing? Who's doubting you silencing? Well, who am I silencing? The doubters. I'm silencing Don't give the him doubters. that power. Don't give him that power. <laughs> He's already got mod in the chat. <laughs> and it's all about the team with the worst name. <laughs> the worst name uh-huh. in SSL. Do you know what I'm talking about? RMC. JJ Rocks? RMC. <laughs> Rattles Magic Cheese. <laughs> Only that would that is already enough for me to say I'm science and the doubters because I believe in them to get a better name. That's that's their main goal of the shift summary. Come up with a better name. You put a deadline on it. Can't play if you can't come up with a better there name. There you go. <laughs> I mean that's not official, but it's unofficial. Get a better name. Uh, but maybe this is actually their chance to prove that they deserve a better name like Cloud9 or <laughs> M80. Yeah, you know, exactly. that's a better name. I prove agree. yourself in the Shift Summer League, get a better name. I think this is a team that coming out, coming out there as a bit of a wild card in terms of like what kind of stacked competition you have in NA at the moment, especially with all the teams participating in SSL. But, you know, I think they can absolutely go crazy in a league play format. You know, it's it's such a different style of playing Rocket League mm-hmm. when you're not just grinding an entire day down to get as far as possible, get through a Swiss stage or whatever. You just need to prepare for those couple of matches. And like Jason said, no, not Jason. Michael, what the fuck? What the hell are you doing in chat? <laughs> Snakes Dan Rattles. That's right. Snakes, Snakes Dan, Dan Rattles. rattles. That, sounds that, would, good, man. that would already be a better name than <laughs> Rattles Magic Cheese. Come on. Um, yeah, I mean, I know in other esports, just like putting your names together, but it's always just an acronym. It's not Rattles Magic Cheese. They would just be RMC. That's just the whole name. So I don't know what the I still don't. I still don't. No. Um, no, not for me. For me, I'm putting all of Europe. All of Europe is going to silence the doubters. You know why? Because my wonderful, all of Europe. My wonderful co-host didn't even think about Europe when I was talking about this, and I believe that they're echoing the sentiments of the entire community when they say they don't care about the European Shift Summer League for some reason because a bunch of fraud Frenchmen who can't even make major finals anymore, <laughs> washed, um, can't are, are decided not to play. <laughs> Listen, what has Europe always been known for? Depth, depth, depth. We've always been to hear, oh, EU's not inconsistent. It's deep. No, they have a thousand good players. They could all come to NA and win, even though G2 beats them all the time. Oh, but G2 lost that one time when they were freestyling against Oxygen. Shut up. Okay. Um, I think that this is actually going to be quite a good tournament because without all the French teams playing, uh, it's going to give a chance for that depth, which is real. And I was making fun of it, which is real to really shine. It's going to be a really tough plan, as we saw with a lot of teams missing regionals or open qualifiers in the regular season that would then go and make another open qualifier and you know get in the top eight. Um, you know, I, I believe, you know, top Cougars made like three, they made like three regionals and they made round five Swiss, all three of them. Like that's how tight the competition is. So I think, well, maybe the name value won't be there. The organizational name value won't be there. It's going to be highly competitive because that next tier of European talent is almost a, like identical. It's yeah. anybody on any day can beat anybody for sure. I think it's going to be very, very entertaining. And I think you, you viewer, stream viewer or pod viewer would be uh, a fool not to tune in to every shift summer league European game, especially as it comes to the end of that league play, because I bet you the difference between 10th place and 4th place is going to be mighty, mighty thin. I mean, uh, that was all yours. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt in the European segment there, but of course I'm excited 
for the European portion of the Shift Summer League. I mean, yeah. I'm already excited that it starts at 7 p.m. and I can actually just watch it at a normal time because <laughs> 7 p.m. Eastern time for NA is a little bit late. I will yeah, probably be moderating the chat and getting all the interviews ready until 5 a.m. in the morning. But we'll see about that when it happens. Yeah. Uh, Cast, can we donate some to the stream so that Jens can buy some like caffeine pills? Uh, <laughs> any gifted subs? Uh, your Twitch Prime. So we'll go I don't. To Jens. I don't even. Uh, tea is is as far as I go when it comes to caffeine. So I don't, don't even drink coffee or energy, energy drinks. That's not for me. Uh, once I introduce you to the Red Bull, it will be over. He'll be up. Mm, uh, no, 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 no. Dude will never sleep again. That 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 stuff that tastes like. Liquid plastic. That's how I would describe it. Now you got to get the good flavored ones they have now, like the dragon fruit one. Special oh, thanks. stuff. Special stuff. All right, um, we've got our final. We got our final segment here. Speed taking. One of our favorites. Always fun. Um, if you guys watching the stream or listening uh, on Spotify or, or YouTube or wherever else, if you want to drop some takes and hear us read them out call your name, and tell you what we think about it, join the Shift Court. We're going to have a link in the description below in the video. We'll include the link on Spotify as well. We can share that here with you guys um, if the link is not already down at the bottom of the channel. But join the Shift Court. Get in, on, get in on the discussion and drop some of your takes about Rocket League Esports in there. You might end up on the show one day. we got this first one here is from Solo Sniper. And since we're, uh, since we're talking about some drinks, uh, Jens, I'm just going to throw it to you. Room temperature water is borderline undrinkable. Room temperature. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I drink a lot of water. There we go. But it really depends on the temperature in the room, outside, whatever. Right? Yeah. If it is hot outside, if it is reaching like 25, so like, uh, I don't know, 80? 75 yeah i don't yeah i don't know yeah, you're right you're right um then i want my water from the fridge because usually that means that the water from the tap is not going to be cold enough for me because the water is not that cold in the just from the tap but also i want colder water but on a on a winter day like room temperature water isn't that bad it really depends for me on the outside temperature. But in general, if you had to choose, then yes, room temperature water sucks. Need to have, have it straight from the tap. If it's been there for a while, you know, it's still <laughs> water, but I'm still throwing it away to get some fresh water. Okay. I feel like it's a little dramatic. Like, I, it's not I would agree, undrinkable. But hey, hey, it's it's what Yin thinks. Let's throw one to Michael then. Come on. Uh, this is from Mop. We've got Mop. SSG make top four at Worlds. No. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Listen. No. Okay. Listen. Done. Like, in, like, there is a non-zero probability this happens, um, but like. Bet it on, genuinely outside of like maybe like G2 Falcons and mates, and I still don't feel great because you never know. Can you really predict any team to make top four? Yeah, outside of honestly G2, I'm gonna say G2 because they are the only ones that have made top two in every event. It's just tough, and there's so many good teams, and so many teams perform randomly good and bad. That's the other thing is that, like, like you know, Furia looked awful in the Swiss barely squeaked through, and then dominated Vitality. Vitality looked great in the Swiss, and then they got a headache. One of their players got a headache, and um, and they and they and they they went four one, right? Like, you know, we've seen BDS look pretty good in in Swisses, and then just bomb out. We've seen you know teams that like G two didn't even look that good in the Swiss. They got swept by Falcons, then they mm -hmm. beat them in the final. And I, I just it's been it's the same issue I've had with Space Station for a very long time. Their their peak level talent simply is not at the level of the other teams so they're banking on sometimes when they get to those top eight top four matches the other team not playing as well um there's a reason the organization hasn't won a regional since rlcsx they're always good never great um and that's and that's no no slight to the players who i think have played as good as they possibly can 
It's just that there's so many good teams. Like yeah, there's yeah. four teams from Europe that are going to be competing for top four. There's a team from Mina. There's two teams from NA. Like, you know, they're the bottom half of that sort of like top eight list with yeah. with uh, BDS, uh, Gen G. Uh, like, maybe like, I mean, you, I don't know. Like, it's just tough. So I'm going to say no. I don't think they're going to be there. It's their time. I think it's fair. You have some fans really disappointed uh, mm-hmm. over there. Yeah, they can. Well, I, I'll, I'll ask them. Uh, Jalen, uh, would you like a side of Seed or would you like a side of Mauled with your cope? Because I'm just giving it to you straight. <laughs> there you go. All, All right. right. I just, I'll just i give you a straight yeah. another one. There, Michael. All right. From Double Ethan. Good. Oh, intellectual. Furia Vitality is the best rivalry of this season. Yeah, undoubtedly for me. And I'll tell you why. There's a, a few a few pretty good rivalries. I think the one that everyone would come to their mind is G2 Gen G because they've just played so many times. Uh, but if I told you, like, if... I told you we're going to pick that. No, because my thing is, um, if I told you you could make sure that there was a, a, a semifinal or final match at the World Championship in front of a packed crowd, which one would you want to see? I think majority of people, and I told you, you couldn't say your favorite team win the world championship. I think the majority of people would say Fury of Vitality. I think we've been G2 Gen G'd out. I think we're good with that. We don't need to see it. We will see it again in the world's final, but like we, you know, in, in dream world, we won't see it. Um, and so for me, it's like, I think most people want to see that more than anything else. They want to see the Fury Ultras on one side, the Vitality Ultras on the other side. They want to see them talking crap. They want to see them jumping up, Rado bouncing, screaming, maybe throwing some, from certain signs with their hands. Um, they want to see Zen trying to fight, <laughs> right? So um, personally, I think that's the best rivalry because it's the one that's, I think most people are looking forward to watching. I think I think the only other one, honestly, I wouldn't even put Gen G, G2 top two. I think the, the two matchups people want to see from a rivalry perspective are Fury of Vitality, and I think people want to see Carmen Corp versus the mates because of the storylines, the fan bases, the ex-players and coaches. I think that's the second best one. And I think the third one would be G2 Gen G. But like we needed to have an alt cast to make it interesting last time. Like, you know, until that fi- world championship final where they face off, like we're not really going to, we're not going to really care about it. Really? Not even a G2 Carmen in there. And maybe... That's not a rivalry to me though. Yeah, it's just it isn't. A, it's but just it could be. It's top teams. Yeah, <laughs> it, it isn't. Yes. It isn't. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> one of them forgot to make the major uh, yeah, because they're yeah, overrated. Yeah. But the other one won. I kind so... of. I kind of I wouldn't mind seeing Falcon G2 becoming a thing. Yeah. It's not a thing yet, That'd but it would fun. be fun. I think so the one I think one that I would like that I I don't know if people consider it a rivalry anymore because the rosters are so different. I would actually like to see a BDS G2 rematch in the final. Because okay. I think if G2 beat BDS in the final, that becomes the defining rivalry of the open era, specifically between yeah. Monkey Moon and Atomic. They both beat each other in the world's final. They both have a major on top of it. I think you're actually looking at these are the two goats of this era. They're playing. Uh, they're playing in different regions. They have dominated for four years, and then the next season becomes, you know, which one's going to fall off first? To be honest, because <laughs> uh, they're getting up there in age, in Rocket League age, of course, not in real age. They're both quite young. Um, yeah, so I would say BDSG two is is up there as well. But Furia Vitality for me, there's just another yeah. level of nasty that they're hitting. Yeah. Um, all right. Yes. We'll go all the way back around. Um, Itachi, this is from Andra, and I, this is kind of a bait. Is this for me? I don't know why I put this here. Yeah, this is for you. All right. Itachi. It's kind of a bait take, my fault. Um, Itachi's not a top five player in the world. Uh, I saw the take come by, and it got one upvote and 43 downvotes. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to talk about this? Yeah, do you have to talk you, about this? The floor is yours, kid. I mean, it's a take. Uh, that, so it's, it's not getting deleted <laughs> the from the channel. All time, for sure. It's, it's one of the takes. I mean, I can see if people purely look at like mechanical abilities, you know, uh, taking a team through tough situations like that, you know, stepping up. But Itachi has done so much more than that, I would say. In, when it comes to getting teams to where they need to be, you know. So, yeah, he's a top five player. 
Is there any other player in Europe besides Zen that you could actually argue has been better than Itachi this season? And I'm saying argue. I don't even know if Zen's been better than Itachi this season. Um, uh, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, Maybe one of his teammates. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, we're going to have to start that conversation. Yeah, 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 exactly. But Was teammates Matera maybe... carried by Itachi on Carmen Corp? That's I think maybe maybe you were can, counting out BDS a little bit too much, but they didn't really show up in London Drawly, when you needed to. Yeah. Drawly for um, a second, people were really into him as the best player in Europe. And I think all three happened. players on, on BDS have a shot at it, but in their own, yeah, in their own ways. It, it's, it's hard to say exactly where you, where you would put them. If they would have done better at London, it would have been easier. Yeah, totally. Totally. If BDS but, yeah. made like top four, top two, I think we're talking about Drali as the best player in the game. All right, Hootie. There you go. All right, here we win. From, from Jamari, a little format question. We love our yep. format questions. World's Swiss elimination or Swiss playoff qualification matches to be best of seven. So lower round three, upper round three, upper oh. lower round four, and then round five. So to qualify to the playoffs oh. or to be eliminated, it's a seven game series, but the first two rounds and the one one round would be best of fives. No, no. I think that becomes too confusing and and I'm not even talking about from like a viewer perspective. I just think I don't know. I just think that's a like you have a stage of an event, but then inside that stage you have different linked series and different like oh, really even kind of rule sets around it, I guess, because, you know, the best of sevens would get timeouts. And I mean, I think it makes sense in the sense that, like, qualification and elimination is obviously more important than round one. But I think I would say no. I would prefer all of it to remain the same, either all best of five or all best of seven. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot more bullish on them on all qualification elimination games being crowd matches than the format. I think... I think, yeah. I think that I do qualify, agree with. Yeah, I think if All the teams yeah. should play in front of a crowd at Worlds. At least yeah. once. That's my. I think, and no, they're not doing that this this year, are they? Or is it round four or five, maybe in front of a? I, don't know. I, I think I don't know. they did say a third day, and so maybe that might is. be because it's a three day playoff bracket. Because it's a yeah, hybrid. maybe yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, this this take uh, for me is very Counter Strike coded mm -hmm. because this is what they do at the majors, which are basically worlds, if yeah. you will, for Counter Strike uh, events where they are doing a best of one but it's one map so it's still like 45 best minutes yeah yeah um they're doing a best of one for every round in swiss but not for the qualification and elimination matches so the the 2-0 the 0-2 the um the uh, well all the others as well and then of course the 2-2 round is just completely best of three so they're they're all best of threes in that case and that Best of one, especially when you have a map pool with every hmm. different map having a different, you know, winner, like a different um, favorite on it. In a best of one, it's really easy for a Counter-Strike team to get upset by a team way lower in the rankings because they can just be good at one particular map and then just crush you on it. And uh, so that's why it's really important to have at least the qualification and elimination matches be best of three, where the pros at the top can actually shine. But here it's just about, is a best of five long enough? Is, is it enough yeah. games to actually figure out consistently who is the best player? And yeah, yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, all right. Who's the, who needs the last one? Hey, I'm going back right, to back. Hey. Uh, this is from Levin. 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 Yeah, and so you go ahead. All right. Team Secrets go one and three at Worlds. So um, no round five. So Not that would getting mean, that chance so at the top eight. They would have to outperform APAC. SSA, likely Mina 2, and one of the NA teams, or, or potentially an EU team, but... Or, and one more, right? Because there would be five teams eliminated, two in that 0-3 round, and then three teams eliminated. 
Yeah, they'd have to be a top OCE eleven two. team in the world. I no, they go two and three. They go round five. I think the they they should they should outperform OCE two. They should outperform um, APAC and SSA. And I think it's fairly level between them and it's anything that is going for Mina. I think um, they're a lot better. I, but I, I think I think I like Secret now. Um, anything has obviously had quite a bit go on in the second half of the season. They didn't perform as strong. They've got a, a newer player that probably doesn't have, you know, experience at at this level. Um, so I think I think I, I, I'll I'll say Secret to round five. Yeah. I think it's going to be matchup dependent for them. Sure. If they run in like that one, that one, two round, if they're in it. Yeah, it could be um, brutal. You know, you could play a juggernaut like power. Mm-hmm. You know, you could play a, you know, a team that's pretty volatile, like BDS. Um, you could, you could play, you know, a team that probably should be out in the O2 round, like Carmen Corp. So, um, you know, it, it'll just be matchup dependent for them. Yeah. Yeah, well, if it makes you feel any better, the community was split on it as well, with 15 yeah. to 18. And I, I think that's the correct answer. Is like it, it definitely could be a round four thing. If, if the take was 0 and 3, it's, you know, obviously no. Yeah. But yeah, that 1 and 3 area is where it's. There's got to be a pleasant. team that's, that, that has a tough, a tough 1 3 out in all these tournaments. Because there's that yeah. third tier. You have like the first tier, which is 1 to 6. And then you have the second tier, which is like 7 and 9. And then you have the third tier that's like. 10 to 13. Yeah. And that's when it's that, that one of those teams can't make it to the nine, nine through 11 or two of them can't. So it's tough for them. It'll be exciting to watch. I know that for sure. Worlds, uh, we've got a little bit of time to wait, September. But while we wait, we've got Shift Summer League. Y'all make sure you stay tapped in. Follow Booty, Shift Is there anything League. else that we have to wait? Huh? Is there anything else that we have while we wait? Um, you know, there is. Well, but really? first, I, I want I want I want you guys to make sure that you're tapped into Shift RLE on on Twitter, um, and give this channel if you're watching this live on Twitch a follow. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe give twenty five gifted subs as well. <laughs> twenty five gifted subs. If you're a YouTube viewer too, and you uh, consistently watch, and you want to come over and check the live, uh, we yeah, just we also, started doing some lives, so y'all come check out the Twitch channel Shift RLE yeah. on Twitch. We also, I got a question from this in the comments the other day. We are on Spotify. So if you're driving, mm-hmm. if, you, if, you, if you drive for a living, if you got a road trip, you're going up to the family cottage, you're going up to the vacation home, you're going up to work and you live an hour away, plug us in and we'll, 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 we'll serenade you through your, your commute. Yeah, and before we go, uh, there is another thing. There's probably going to be many things. Um, actually, I saw Esports World Cup announce some like region-based. Cup. I'll be playing. Some region-based tournaments. Um, but I am hosting some 2v2 tournaments. I've got a little Ooh. bit of funding from uh, a partner, Thrustmaster Controllers. Y'all go check them out. Oh, Yens has actually got one as well. We're both rocking the I was Master. plugging them the other day, Hoodie, to one of my, to two of my friends. We were playing hey, some Castle Crashers, and I, I was like, it. they were complaining about their controllers. I said, you guys got to link up with Hoodie. And you get <laughs> check those out the Thrustmasters. E-swap. Yeah. Um, they are definitely unique controllers in the space. I mean, you can swap out the sticks and stuff. But yeah, we're running some 2v2 events. We've got an NA server 2v2 event this coming weekend. Uh, we've got some uh, some great talent lined up. I'm still working out some of the rosters. And then the wow. following weekend, which is the 20, 20th and 21st, I'll be rocking a, another 2v2 event over on the EU servers. Um, you know, and, and I'm not, I don't have all the, t- the teams locked in or anything, but I've got, I can tell you, I already have one, at least one major team in both regions. Uh, Let's competing. go. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. If you are looking for some content this weekend, we've got some 2v2 rocking. It'll all be uploaded on YouTube and everything as well if, if you miss it live. So, if y'all are looking for something to watch, we've got uh, Shift Summer League coming up. Hootie's got some 2v2s. I'm sure there's going to be some more community events as well, so y'all stay tapped in uh, on Twitter. Shift will typically help you get pointed in the right direction to see the competition. So awesome. that's it. Guys, any closing thoughts on the first live? No well, major issues, at least not yeah. from a technological <laughs> point of view. I mean, we are issues, but... <laughs> Big shout Listen, out to our producer Lando. Land easy. Cooking up. Uh, yeah, you know when I, like I said, when I started Shift and and back in '78 after the war, um, yeah, this is all I wanted, you know. Uh, and you know when we get to reveal our, our Shift GPT that actually uh, generates roster moves, um, <laughs> you know, in in a couple months, that'll be another goal I visioned back in '66 when I uh, when I invented Shift early. Uh, alongside uh, Jalen Shift, which is actually it's where it's that's where we get the name. Yeah, it's his last name. 
own show. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate it. Y'all share this with your homies if you enjoyed the show. And that's See you it soon. for, uh, what is this, episode 23. Right. Well, I've got today and in my time zone, but tomorrow for, for you guys, we've got the Open Qualifiers coming up. So that's on the Tuesday. And then on the Wednesday, it's the play-ins, the close qualifiers, if you will. And then next week, it's really kicking off. So we're going to do another show before that, when we know all the teams that are going to be playing in the league play format. So that's going to be amazing. It will be fun. Like I said, y'all stay tuned in uh, across the different platforms. Thank you again for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.